Hello! I really appreciate the Patreon contributions that you've made to my channel. It, it means a lot to me. And so in today's video, I'd like to share with you some of the tips and tricks that I've used in the shop, and hopefully they'll be useful for you as well. Uh, first up, you've probably seen these before, just standard cable ties. But what you may not have seen is the professional cable tie installation gun that makes using these a whole lot easier. So the idea is that you put the cable tie on loosely and then use the gun and it automatically tightens it and clips off the uh, tail. And the gun is actually so powerful that it has a tension adjustment here. And if you turn the tension adjustment too high, it will either break the wire tie if it's you know small enough or it will crush to death whatever it is you're tying down. So on the larger wire ties, you can turn up the tension and get quite a lot of force on it. These are super useful. You can buy this at McMaster, and also Fry's Electronics and some other local electronics stores have these. I'll put links into the description of all of the items that I mentioned in today's video, and these are all items that I've purchased myself. I'll always make it very clear if manufacturers have sent me something for review. So this is uh, my favorite adhesive of all time. This is Devcon Plastic Welder. And there are other brands that call themselves Plastic Welder, but it's an entirely different formulation. And so you have to get this one, which is cream colored. It's not clear. It's a two-part adhesive, as you can see. It comes in one of these classic epoxy looking tubes, but I don't believe it's epoxy. I think it's actually a polymethyl methacrylate uh, type adhesive, so an acrylic adhesive. And even though it's meant for plastics, it's actually quite good on anything else too. Metal, wood, you know, smooth surfaces, rough surfaces, pretty much everything. But the fact that it bonds really well to most plastics makes it really useful to have around. It has a, a pot life of about five minutes and uh, is strong enough to handle in about 30 minutes and maybe full cure in about a day. If I had to choose only one adhesive to have in my toolkit, it would definitely be this one. If I could pick a second adhesive, it would definitely be E6000. This is a very flexible sort of adhesive, and the MSDS sheet makes it unclear uh, as to what's actually in here. The solvent is perchloroethylene, and I believe it's just a clear elastomer dissolved in that solvent. Um, so when you put this out onto something, the perchloroethylene helps it dig into the surface, so it's really good for uh, bonding to rubbers and other plastics. Uh, it's a slow cure. It takes about a day or two or even longer if you've got a really thick amount of it. Uh, but the nice thing is it's, it's high tack and so it's, it's easy to stick things down. And like I say, it stays flexible. So if you're repairing a rubber part, it's uh, quite good for that. Even though the plastic welder will uh, attach to almost every kind of plastic out there, there's one or two notable exceptions. If you want to bond something to polyethylene, like the material that this uh, water jug is made out of, this is very difficult to uh, glue because it's a low surface energy plastic, meaning the chemical bonds that are exposed on the surface here don't really react with much, and so it's hard to get an adhesive to stick to them. However, there is a glue that is specially made for this application. It's Scotchweld DP8005. This is kind of an unusual adhesive. It has a 10 to 1 mix ratio, and so it comes in this weird kind of dual syringe. And it's, uh, it's quite expensive. I believe this tube is about 20 or $30 from McMaster. But it does do an amazingly good job of sticking to uh, plastics, polyethylenes like this. And you can make a gas-tight seal with this adhesive on uh, plastics like this. Not coincidentally, all of these three adhesives uh, smell extremely strongly when you're mixing them up, so you know they're working really well. I forgot to add that the plastic welder is actually easily machined and drilled after it's cured, and so it's much less brittle than typical epoxies. Uh, it makes it really well suited for repairing vintage plastic parts, where you can glue the part back together and then machine away the, the bits that you don't need. This is a desk lamp from Ikea that costs about 10 or $15, and it's got a, a warm white LED here and an inline switch. And this is one of those products that seems, you know, kind of marginally useful when you first get it, and then you start using it, and it's just so useful that you'll want to have one of these on pretty much every workbench that, uh, that you use. It's sort of like having someone holding a flashlight at just the right angle, kind of at all times. And it's small enough to stay out of your way so that you can position this thing kind of up close to where your head is, and then the light is always going in the right direction, kind of where your eyes are pointed. Let's say you want to mount something uh, with a nut and bolt to a thin plastic or metal sheet. So for example, this pretend this is like the hull of a boat. You could put your nut and bolt through the hole and then use a whole bunch of silicone after it's tight to make this a watertight seal. 
But there's actually another device that's meant exactly for this application, and that is called a well nut. So this is basically a rubber, a soft rubber piece with a brass nut sort of embedded into the rubber. And the idea is that you uh, get one that's sized for the hole that you need and push it through like that. And then when we tighten down the screw, it pulls on the nut that's embedded in the rubber. And it's kind of tricky because we have to keep the rubber from spinning. However, as we tighten this down, it's pulling the, uh, the well nut into a shape that forces the rubber out and makes a tight seal with the hole. So you can actually use this setup as just a plug if we don't attach anything to it. So if you drill a hole in a bulkhead and then want to plug it up uh, temporarily, you can put this well nut in there and the expanding rubber will create a nice tight seal. If you're in a real hurry, there's a way to make hot glue even quicker and dirtier than it already is. I actually love this stuff, and this, this trick is not meant to be silly. This is actually very useful. If you're going to glue something that um, you need to hold up in the air, like for example, see how the glue is dripping off the piece? I can't set this down on the desk because the hot glue is still molten. So if we want to make that hot glue freeze in a hurry, you can either use one of these canned air dusters and just turn it upside down uh, to freeze the glue in place, or you can buy actual freeze spray. So now the piece is uh, cold to the touch and you can put this on the desk and you don't have to worry about it dripping down on the desk. So if you're making, you know, tons of wiring harnesses and you need to put a drop of glue on each one to, um, to cover up some exposed, in, uh, exposed conductor or something like that, uh, making the hot glue go even faster is actually a very useful tip. If you're going to put threads into a hole that you just drilled into material, there's, uh, you'll need a tap and there's three basic kinds of tap. There's a taper tap where the uh, tool is, is, has about seven or eight of these cutting threads tapered down to the tip. There's a plug tap that only has three or four threads tapered, and there's a bottoming tap that only has one or two threads tapered. And the idea is that in difficult materials, you would start with the taper tap because it's easier to get the tapping operation started straight. And then if you have a, a blind hole where you want to put threads all the way to the bottom of the hole and you can't go through the material, you can switch over to a bottoming tap which is much more difficult to get straight to begin with, uh, but it cuts all the way to the end. However, in soft materials that are prone to melting, like plastic, uh, the rules are a little bit different. I actually don't even have any taper taps in this small size because um, the material is so soft, even, even with a taper tap, it's not going to really start the hole all that much straighter. And I find that with materials, especially like acrylic, that are prone to melting, starting with a bottoming tap is actually the best way to go because all of the cutting happens at those first couple threads. Whereas a tap that's like this, all the cutting is distributed over this large area and a lot of these partially formed uh, thread cutters just rub against the material and creates way more friction. So I actually greatly prefer just starting with a bottoming tap. To make uh, things go a little faster, you can actually chuck that bottoming tap right up into a drill. And you'll find after doing this a little bit, especially in materials like acrylic, that you'll be melting the acrylic. So what I like to do is get a wash bottle of distilled water and put a little bit of distilled water right on the hole that I'm going to tap. And then uh, just use the drill to tap it like that. You'll find once you get a pretty good rhythm going, if you're tapping a lot of holes, that um, the water will, will start to boil even a little bit, which is fine. It's doing its, its job of cooling the situation down. For larger taps like this, you'll find that gripping it in the drill truck may not work. It may actually spin because the torque required is just too high. So then what you can do is get one of these uh, tap wrenches. This one's made by Irwin. And uh, you can put the tap in this side. And on this side, it's got a 3 8 square drive. And so then I put in a quarter inch hex to three eighth square drive adapter and then put the, the uh, quarter hex into the drill chuck. So this way there's a positive drive. There's no way this can slip and a lot of these drills you can put them into low gear and so when it's spinning along it's actually a fairly slow rate of spin but it has a lot of torque. Uh, and, then, okay, and then you'll probably want to use the, um, the ratchet or the, uh, the clutch on your drill so that you don't break a tap. But you can, you can tap aluminum like this and uh, there's quite a lot of torque available. And the fact that this whole arrangement is kind of wobbly is actually a, a side benefit, believe it or not. Um, when you're doing a tap this big, it's nice to have a little bit of compliance here so that as you're holding it, just the wiggling of your hand doesn't cause the tap to break. This will actually make your job a little bit easier. 
if you're still using duct tape, do yourself a favor and buy yourself a roll of gaffer's tape. Uh, it'll, this works in almost all the situations uh, in which duct tape is good. However, gaffer's tape is much easier to tear cleanly than duct tape. And yet, paradoxically, it's also stronger when it's being, you know, pulled apart like this. Uh, also, the adhesive doesn't leave a residue after being attached for, you know, a week or two. And you can put it down and remove it and re reapply and it doesn't uh, lose tack quite as much. It's also a matte finish and a bit thicker than most duct tapes. This is probably the best double-sided tape uh, that's made with craft paper that I've ever used. It used to be called Permacel P95, and now it's called Nito. And you can get this tape along with any other kind of tape just about at findtape.com. This stuff is so strong that you can actually hold down a part while you're milling it on a milling machine. So if your part has a lot of surface area, you can uh, use a few pieces of this and put, put the part down onto your plastic spoil board or whatever, aluminum even, and uh, you'll generally have enough tack to do light milling operations on it. So you can use this to hold down other things in the shop, sandpaper onto glass for doing uh, flat sanding, that sort of thing. It's uh, quite expensive, but very well worth it. One last one, if you're drilling large holes like greater than, say, a quarter inch in diameter in a brittle material, like acrylic especially, it really helps to have a drill bit that's uh, purpose made for it. So this drill bit has uh, a really um, sharp point angle on it, so it's not 135 degree, it's actually a 90 degree point, and it also has a zero degree rake angle. So as you can see, the cutting surface here is almost 90 degrees uh, from the, the part of the bit that touches the work. And this means that when the bit breaks through the bottom side of your brittle material, it doesn't crack it apart and try to pull the rest of the bit through. Uh, these are sold by Tap Plastics, and you can also get them from McMaster. Okay, hope you found that helpful. See you next time. Bye.